Steve Jewin, MMA Mania. Steve, you're on the line with Darian Caldwell. The Wolf, Darian Caldwell. Sir, how are you today? How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Really fine, because you're on the line. And you've been howling for this title shot for a while now, so how does it feel that it's only a week away? Oh, it feels good, man. It's been too long. It's been a long time coming, like I said before, when we were face-to-face, you know. Um, it was only... It was only a matter of time. This fight's been inevitable, you know. Um, I've been watching this kid come up. I'm sure he's been watching me come up. So um, the time is perfect. Couldn't be a better time. It seemed like the time was perfect when you beat Joe Warren. All signs were pointing toward that title shot. And the Joe Timinglo fight was just a formality to a lot of people, including me. It was like, hey, he just needs to fill some time until Dantas is ready. And then we had one of the bigger upsets of 2016. So was the rematch them showing faith in you, I guess, that you were still that number one contender like you are right now? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I, I appreciate Bellator for that opportunity to get that one back because, uh, you know, uh, whenever you lose, you know, me specifically, well, I want it back. I, even in my wrestling career, I, I never fought, wrestled a guy who beat me twice, you know. Um, so if I, if I ever lost to someone, it was, it was, it was just some, some, a few changes that I had to make, a few adjustments I had to make and, um, I've never been outmatched at any weight that I've competed in. So um, it, was, it's, it was cool to be able to get that one back, you know. Um, Bill Tomlin was a good fighter. Uh, that goes to show, you know, you, you, you can't underestimate anyone. Everyone's, you know, got a puncher's chance, got a, got a flying choke's chance, you know. So um, just sticking the course and, and, and continue to, continuing to grind, you know, has got me back here. Now this opportunity, this moment has arrived, and as you said, you've got an incredible skill set that's never been matched in your weight class, including the fact that you are formerly an NCAA champion. That's wrestling skills that I think the only person that could ever match up with Dantas in that category is a guy you already beat, Joe Warren. Yeah, I think Joe Warren's a great fighter, you know. Uh, all credit to Joe for going out there and, and trying to get his title back and 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 keep up. Uh, uh, compete with Dante, but, uh, I feel like, even though he's beating me, he's beating me everyone that he's fought besides me and Dante, I just don't feel like he has that explosiveness, you know, that hunger, that drive, that, that, that got him those world titles, um, in two weight classes in, 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 in the organization. So, uh, I think, uh, his time was, was a little outnumbered to be the best in the world, but he still, one of the best in the world. So I think uh, maybe it was time for a new hungry wolf to come up, come in and, and take over. It is your time right now, and the time is now for the fight on October 6th at the Thackerville Windstar World Casino and Resort. So that's become a very familiar venue for you. This is your third time there in your last four fights. Do you feel like it's a home away from home now? Yeah, it's, it's never going to be a, a home away from home. I enjoy it. The fans and, and um, the hospitality they show, they show me love out there in, in Oklahoma, but, you know, um, I'm definitely going to um, make a point to uh, where fans want to see me in other states, you know, uh, specifically here in California, here out in New York, New Jersey, you know, um, somewhere else besides Thackerville, you know, because uh, me fighting for world titles in, in Thackerville is just not ideal for me. Um, yeah, it might be ideal for Joe Warren or Eduardo Dante, but that's because they can't really do anything with this division. You know, they, I'm a man in this division, and um, everyone in the nation is going to see that, and, and, and these fans are going to want to see me in their state, so that's what's important. Now, if you get that world title, they did just announce a show for January at the Forum in Inglewood. Right now, they've only got one fight on the card, and that's Douglas Lima defending against Rory McDonald. So maybe that would be the place to get a fight in California defending your title. Yeah, that would be cool uh, to, to go ahead and, and be on a, a card with, with, with two vets, you know, champion and former, you know, UFC guy who's valid for a title at one point in his career. Um, I, I think that would be a good opportunity. Um, I live here in San Diego, two hours drive from, 
from from LA. So that give all all my friends out here um, a reason to drive up and go to LA and get crunk. But in the meantime, we've got Dantes right in front of you. This is a fight where both fighters have excellent speed and excellent power and the same height, but you've got the wrestling skills that I already mentioned, and you have a four-inch reach advantage, or maybe even five-inch, I think. So how do you feel that helps you with this yeah, fight? Think, Go ahead. I think the reach advantage is something like seven. It's the last time I look is 67, and mine is a 74, unless he's, he's uh, just grown a couple inches since uh, the last time I've seen him, but uh, maybe, I, I think I got seven seven inches, you know, he, he, I don't feel like he closes um, anything I haven't seen here in the gym uh, at Alliance. Uh, I don't think um, he matches that well with me, but that's why we fight these fights, you know, because you know, everyone's got a, a puncher's chance to win a fight. Everyone's got a He's got an elbow's chance or a knee chance or a kick, a net, a flying choke net or a chance, you know. So that's why we fight these fights. But uh, come October 6th, I don't see him making it past three minutes. And one of the things that I think is a little telling with Dantas and something that I write about a lot when I cover his fights is he tends to win by speed. He just outmaneuvers. He gets in and he gets out really quick. So has the training at Alliance focused on that, his footwork and his speed? Uh, no, not necessarily. Um, if there's one thing he's not going to do is outmaneuver me. I'm the out, I'm the maneuver guy. Like, I got balance out this world. Um, I hear the term most athletic being thrown around a lot. I'm the most athletic. This guy's the most athletic. I'm truly the most athletic guy inside the cage. So, um, uh, I don't see any, um, threats that he pulls there. How are you physically for this fight? Everything coming together 100%, no problems in the training? Yeah, this last week is all about body maintenance and getting my weight down. And, you know, I had a healthy camp, you know. Um, I'm just ready to perform October 6th. Healthy doesn't always mean injury-free. I know sometimes there are little nicks and bumps along the way. Nobody ever comes out of a camp 100. Yeah, I don't think, I think if, if you come out of a camp, you know, without any nicks and bruises, then. I don't think you train hard enough and you don't deserve to win. So, um, I think you'll be facing the same problems that I have or if they're even problems, you know, I don't, I don't really see anything with my body being a problem. I think I'll be a hundred percent ready to perform, uh, on Spike TV until the six you go to her for the girls who are world title. So besides that, I was able to get through this camp, you know, and, and and get through these sparring sessions and get through these wrestling sessions because you got a lot of, it goes down. There's some good shit going down. We don't, we don't, we don't fuck around out here. So we, we really take this shit serious. So. And indeed you should. Eduardo Dantes is the biggest test to date. And the main event is the big spotlight that you've always wanted for this fight. Three or four fights ago when I was interviewing you, it was like, you know what? I'm already a champion. I just got to fight for the title. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, exactly. The only difference with this fight and next fight is, you know, I'll have my, I have a banner up waving in the uh, in the arena, so um, as a 135 pound champion, and um, if I was go the same way as as this fight, you know, I'm gonna go out there and whoever they put in front of me, I'm gonna run them over. Who would you like to fight for a title defense? Would you give Dantas immediate rematch, or would you want to face somebody else from the division? Well, I know they just go over uh, Michael McDonald. I think he's the top 12 guy in the world, you know. Um, from the UFC, I, I like for them to bring over more UFC guys and um, more top ten guys, you know, in the world. Whoever, whoever Delco wants to put in front of me, I'm fine with. You know, it's my job to go out there and beat them up. Um, I don't see anybody in the world beat me at this weight class, so I feel pretty comf- confident in the fact that you know, after this fight, you know, I, I can beat anybody else following this fight and for the next five, ten years. He's, 29 years old, you know, if Joe Walker can do it from, from, from at 40, then, you know, I damn sure can do it at 40. Right, absolutely. You got another 10 years at least in the bank that you can keep on competing at an elite level. So I noticed you mentioned the UFC guys coming over, like Mike McDonald. We've seen a lot of other big names, like Big Country, no pun intended, and Lorenz Larkin and 
I just wonder if you see some of those guys coming in and, you know, they do really good out of the gate and others like Larkin seem to be struggling a little bit. Do you think UFC guys are underestimating Bellator guys? You know, I, I know, you know, the world underestimates Bellator. Um, I, I don't know why, but um, the more UFC guys they go over, they'll realize that we're not the game. We're not over here fucking around. Like we're, we're here to take names and, and, and stay on the top. So uh, I, don't, I, I don't see uh, any, any closing threats anywhere. So, period. Bellator 184 coming up here on the 6th, just a week away as I record this. So what do you have to say to Dantas before the fight? Any warning you want to give him? Any prediction you want to make for him before the fight takes place? It's not much I can say to him, but uh, October 6th is a lot that I can do to him, and that's, that's what's going to happen. You don't want to miss it. If you don't already have tickets for Windstar World and Casino Resort, you should get them fast. They ain't going to last. Just like what we're hoping to see in this fight is Caldwell coming out and hitting fast, and perhaps Eduardo Dantas won't last. But I'll let him do the talking here as he plugs any sponsors and teammates and social media he likes. You you rap better than most of these rappers out right now. I, I can hear it. I can hear it. I can hear the lines. I can hear it. Um, but yeah, follow me on social media at The Wolf MMA. That's everywhere. Twitter, Instagram. Shout out to my sponsors and everyone who's been, who's been behind me. You know, um, my family and, and all that. You know, it's, it's been a long journey. It's been a lot of people, not just this training camp, but every, since I've started wrestling and any, any combat sport, you know, and it's been teachers. It's been every, everybody's played a role and played their part to help me get in here. So, uh, I'm appreciative of that. I'm going to come October 6th, and we're going to put our stamp. One last question as we wrap it up. Will there be a backflip off the cage to celebrate if you win? Yeah, you might see three of them. 